All right, we'll call the meeting to order. Deborah, you want to do roll call? Absolutely. Walker? Here. Bentley? Here. Bollinger? Here. Dowling? Here. Cooler? Here. Register? Here. Shaw? Here. Here. Excellent, thank you. Uh, so we're going to do some introductions. I should say the third item on the agenda is elect the vice chair. We're going to do that a little bit later. Uh, so let's... Um, no, I'm sorry. Let's do a residence forum before we move to the next item. Are there any residents who want to speak? Anybody online wishing to speak, please raise your hand. No. Okay, excellent. So uh, some housekeeping items then. So uh, we are on Zoom. This will be recorded, is available for later. Hot mic is right there. <laughs> so when you speak, Please try to project into that microphone so that people can hear you and so that the recording is good. Um, know that it's a hot mic, you know, sometimes even after the meeting, so just know that. <laughs> uh, restrooms are down the hallway, but in order to get there, you have to go outside and come back in. It's not an outhouse. You just have to go outside and go back in towards uh, the fireside room. Good water, everybody's found that. Um, speaking one at a time is really important because of the microphone, because this senses, you know, where the sound is coming from. So if there's more than one person speaking, people on Zoom can't understand what's happening. So just so we all know that. Um, any questions on housekeeping? Right. By the way, we'll try to keep this limited to an hour and a half. Sometimes I may cut you off if I think we need to move on. Like at yesterday's board meeting with the coffee was going on too long. Uh, so at any rate, welcome to everybody. We're going to do some self-introductions. I think it's uh, important because none of us really know each other that well. I'll go first. Um, my wife and I have lived here for eight years. And um, we live on in Eagle Ridge in Mutual 68. I was on the Mutual board for three years. And I've been on the GRF board for four years. Seems hard to believe. Um, I'm a CPA by training, but my career was really in commercial radio in San Francisco, um, not on the air, but as a general manager. Uh, but with that, I had a lot of experience with research and branding and marketing and, and those sorts of things. So not that I'm any expert at all. Many of you have much more expertise than I do. But let's go around the room. Just a brief intro, if you will. Kathleen, let's start. So I'm Kathleen Schaub, and I'm a newbie. My husband and I moved here in March. Um, I have had a long career in marketing, in tech marketing. I was the chief marketing officer for a $2 billion tech uh, reseller, and I held various executive positions in software companies. Uh, before I retired in 2020, I spent my last almost a decade working for a market research company and leading their chief marketing officer uh, advisory where my clients were companies like Microsoft, Google, and IBM, and as well as a lot of uh, little startups. And uh, right now I am working on my first book, which is a CMO's guide to marketing management under in an uncertain world, and it will be published in the spring. So I've got uh, two Two daughters, two grandkids. We're taking a pet break right now. My kid died in July, last July, so we're taking a pet break. I'm really excited to be part of this. Um, wanting to bring, you know, get more involved in the community as well as, you know, found this to be a place where I might be able to bring some expertise to this task. Welcome, Kevin. Thank you. Kevin Dowling, I've, I've only been here 10 weeks. So that's <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm brand new. Um, I moved from Hayward. I was on the Hayward City Council for 12 years. I've been a fundraiser for um, nonprofits for 28 years. Currently a fundraiser for Habitat for Humanity. I'm also vice president of the Santa Clara Alumni, Santa Clara University Alumni. And I live on Rockbridge. Welcome, Kevin. Linda. Hi, I've lived here since 2015, so quite a long time, and I live on Tarmac Inn now. Um, I did live on Pine Knoll when I first moved in, remodeled a unit there, sold it, and then I'm getting another condo and remodeling it. Um, 
I don't try to do that, but I end up doing it. And um, <laughs> my, I'm from Oregon originally. I went to University of Oregon, have a degree in um, journalism, and I've worked in marketing um, pretty much my whole career. I started out in Oregon in healthcare, so did a, did a lot of corporate um, work with Kaiser Permanente when they broke up Kaiser Steel, Kaiser into different um, distinct groups from steel and shipbuilding all the way to the Kaiser Permanente. And then I worked in Oregon Health Sciences University, which had a lot of different groups, schools, et cetera, on Pill Hill. And so they broke that up. Well, they didn't break it up. They tried to unite it under one identity and figure out how to communicate that. So, um, and then I came to the tech world after that. And so I've been working with software and hardware companies um, for a while and then now I'm not doing that at all. I'm working in real estate. Once I moved to Rossmore, I started working in real estate. So another perspective. Hopefully I can add some help to this committee with those two perspectives. Welcome, Linda. Appreciate it. Thank you. Ted. Uh, my name is Ted Bentley. I've just been here a short time, also 21 years. Uh, <laughs> and uh, I'm involved in a few things, boomers, boomer bocce, uh, hiking club, garden club, pickleball, golf, GRF board, uh, director on the board, uh, planning committee. I work on the planning committee, now the marketing task force. And I also uh, put a lot of time, about six months out of the year into P4P, which is pickleball for Parkinson's, which is um, only done in Rossmore. Uh, at the present time, and uh, last year they raised about eighty-five thousand dollars just out of Rossmore for that fund. And um, been in the restaurant business. I don't have a, like a marketing background, but I had to market, you know, not knowing maybe what I was doing. Um, in for restaurants, I've owned. I was an electrician in LA, and decided that why not open a restaurant? So I moved up to here to open a restaurant and I've had uh, five different restaurants in the Bay Area, plus one gourmet dog biscuit business that I ran. Yeah. And uh, then when I turned 55, I got tired of working seven days a week and uh, decided to retire and came here. Awesome. Great. Mike? I'm Mike Culler. I'm a retired pharmacist. I have a business degree with a marketing emphasis. Um, I was assistant director of pharmacy at Children's Hospital in Oakland for five years. I left and became a serial entrepreneur, starting up four different home health care businesses. My fourth business was All Star Medical Supply in downtown Walnut Creek. I don't know if any of you have been there. Um, I started it in 2010. Um, it's um, on Mount Diablo next to Noah's Bagels. Um, I had never had a business where I had to market to the public before, so it was quite a, an experience learning everything I could about how to uh, make a retail business successful. Um, I did, and I sold the business in uh, 2020 to a woman from Lafayette and retired. And over half of my customers, uh, senior customers in the store were from Rossmore, of course. When I put the business plan together for the store, I found that Walnut Creek has twice the number uh, percentage of seniors as other communities in the area, primarily because of Rossmore. And it has a high um, average household income. So my vision for the store was to make it uh, a Nordstrom-like store with an open floor plan, 2,500 square feet, bright lighting, soft colors, and uh, great customer service. Um, to market it, we uh, used newspaper ads. The Rossmore News was one. Um, I was able to, we, we offered free delivery for Rossmore, so I was able to spend a lot of time coming here and, and seeing what a beautiful community it was. Um, we used, uh, uh, I used a 30 second uh, local cable TV ad we put together, uh, other newspaper ads, uh, direct sales to the uh, senior uh, facilities and to local pharmacies and a Facebook page, Google ads, uh, you know, put all that together to make the, the business successful. But I learned a lot about Rossmore and talked to people 
who came in because I knew I would eventually want to downsize to a condominium. So I, I asked people how they liked it here and what they thought about it. And I was amazed that everyone I talked to loved it here. And um, in 2021, my wife and I moved here. So we've lived here three and a half years and we love it too. I've joined about six different clubs and organizations and um, made a lot of new friends. So uh, we live on Cactus Court, two daughters, no grandkids. Well, welcome, Mike. We appreciate it. Before we get to staff, uh, Amy, why don't you introduce yourself? Amy Bollinger. I'm a fifth generation Californian, and I graduated from UC Berkeley, and I uh, had family that lived here, and I almost beat you. I've been here 15 years, and um, my career was very uh, broad-based because I was interested in a lot of different things, but I ended up in higher education and uh, started teaching and then uh, gradually was promoted. And uh, I ended my career as the Dean of Students at uh, the Academy of Art University in San Francisco. And I was uh, in an umbrella executive committee overseeing marketing, outreach branding for, a 15,000 student population. So it's about the same as here. And we did a lot of umbrella marketing, both nationally and internationally, as well as branding. And we branded every single major of which there were 15 in art and design. So there was a lot of silos there like there are here. Uh, I've joined a lot of clubs. Uh, I, I enjoy writing, and so I, I write for a bunch of clubs. I know Anne because I'm always submitting things. And um, the Academy of Art is uh, for profit, so it was run like a corporation, even though it was in the business of education. And so I feel like I have a lot of corporate marketing experience through that. I was with them for 15 years. And I live on Tice Creek up kind of up the hill <laughs> and I think that's it oh I have uh three uh sons and three grandchildren awesome oh welcome Amy and you want to introduce sure. yourself I'm Ann Peterson I'm the director of communications so I oversee the Rossmore News the TV station and the websites I've been a lifelong newspaper journalist and I worked at the East Bay Times for almost 20 years before I came here. And the last five years, I was mostly on the digital side of the operations and real-time news. And I think that's a large reason why I was brought into Rossmore was to try to nudge us out of a print-only world and get us more digitally savvy. And basically about the last year and a half, Jeff and I have been talking more and more about how this is a community that really should be able to sell itself. It just needs a little help. <laughs> so we love the idea of this marketing task force about figuring out a real marketing plan so that what everybody in here knows, we can tell everybody out there as well. So very excited about the work we're gonna do here. And, and we're delighted that Anne is our staff liaison because uh, she is all powerful. And speaking, <laughs> not, speaking not really, of all powerful, I'll do everything <laughs> very nice, <laughs> very nice. And Jeff is too, but Jeff is the how about nice, uber powerful. <laughs> uh, Jeff Matheson, I'm the general manager for Golden Rain Foundation. Uh, I just want to thank you all for volunteering for this committee and kind of sharing your expertise with us and, and dedication. Uh, I, I'm really excited about this committee because it is the work that you're going to do is is vital to our success moving forward as we face a number of challenges with the, the housing industry right now, how it uh, is going, but also helping us kind of define what Rossmore is uh, a little bit better and, and how we can share that vision uh, with not only the, the residents living here, but uh, those on the outside that we hope are future residents. So. Thank you, appreciate it. And and not just a footnote, but we have Rossmore News here today, so be aware that you may be quoted in the newspaper. <laughs> they are fairly accurate. <laughs> <laughs> I said fair and accurate, didn't I? 
but it, it's Sam, right? Yeah, Sam yeah. Richards. Um, I've been with the news for about three and a half years. I write stories and I edit them. And uh, before that, I was at Local News Matters, Space City News Service, and about 25 years at the Contra Costa slash East Bay slash Valley Times. <laughs> and Dan. Dan. I'm Dan Rosenstraw, photographer for Rossmore News. I've uh, been here going on six years, uh, five years. Um, came from the uh, East Bay Times. I was a photographer there for two years and retired. And um, and called me up one night and said, you consider coming over here? And came over here. I love it here. So. Might be here for a while. <laughs> so just so we all know, the members of the, the voting members of the task force are the seven of us. And Deborah is here because we need her. <laughs> <laughs> Writing all your wonderful thoughts down. Yeah. <laughs> Getting it all down on paper. So she's our great support. Um, so any questions so far? All right. So just one item, the charter. I don't know if you guys had a chance to read the charter. Um, it's a lot of administrative and, and details. The most important part is the purpose and responsibility of the task force. So the task force will be the advisory to the GRF board and proceed with its efforts to explore a brand for Rossmore and initiatives for marketing that brand. That's about as vague as you can get <laughs> and broad. Uh, and uh, almost uh, every one of you asked that question uh, in the interview process. So a lot of the, the foundation work that we do is determined by this task force. Uh, so it will evolve over time. And we've got six months uh, to then make a recommendation to the planning committee and, and the board. So um, with that, I thought it would be kind of fun just take 15 minutes and and it really came about because and especially with the newbies and, and i should also say i think you guys can see what a balance of members we have on this task force between expertise long-term living here shorter term living here real estate i mean it, this is all and, and retail serving the the community uh, really awesome cross-section of perspectives that that we were trying to get so thank you all for for being a part of that but as I said, we were gonna take about, let's just say 15 minutes and throw up every idea, every positive attribute. <clears throat> I think you started this when, when we, in the interview process because you're so new. You, you're like, oh, it's beautiful here. <laughs> I played golf here in a tournament and that's why I'm here. So I don't want us to be judgmental. I don't want us to discuss really. It's just, we're gonna throw the ideas up on, on the, the whiteboard here. And is gonna do that magic. Um, positive attributes. Any thoughts? Safety. safety. It's very safe community. Broad base uh, housing costs. Feeling of community. Mm -hmm. You mentioned beauty. I think it feels like living in a park. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Active. Right. Clubs. Yeah, anything, clubs. You, anything you possibly could want to do, you have a club for it? Right. Resort feeling. The central location. Yes. And transportation. Mm -hmm. Definitely. In a great community of Wall Creek. Mm -hmm. Can't ignore that. The services that a person can access. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, particularly when you're giving up a home, it's like, oh, I don't have to take care of the yard anymore. You know, oh, I have a handyman I can call. You know, those things are actually more huge in thinking about what we would need going forward. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Entertainment. These mm -hmm. are activities, yeah. yeah. Near family. Mm -hmm. For a lot of people, they move to be near family. Mm -hmm. I would say the Rossmore News. It's, it's quite something. I show people the Thank you. And they're like, I should capitalize that one. It's much larger than the Chronicle these days, that's for sure. <laughs> Anything else? Oh, layered pricing of housing, I guess, is better than broad housing. Yeah. Layered, diverse, diverse layered pricing. Offerings. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. You know, but affordably, you can get a one bedroom condo for 300000 mm -hmm. in a nice community. Mm -hmm. you know, tough parts of Oakland. Yeah, you can kind of, you can find your water level. There's a, a house on the market for 1.5 million. 
Well, you can spend more than that if you want. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just quoting that one right now. <laughs> But one thing that always interests me is even though we have all the different levels of where you can buy at, everybody's on the same level as being having the opportunity to get involved in Rossmore on anything. You know, right. so it really doesn't matter where you get in here. It's it might be just being able to get just get in and you have the same everybody's on the same level of playing as soon as you get in here. You get access of all the services. Yeah, everybody has the same level of access. Somebody mentioned facilities, I guess. What's that? The event center, the gym, the, mm -hmm. all the main places, and clubs, or parts and crafts. The Creek Side Cafe. I was going to say the business model for us was a, you know, being able to just own your own place. Because some of the competition, some of the other places that we looked at are the newer business model where you basically give up your home for you know the rest of your life and we'll see what's left at the end for your heirs and for some people that was uh, like our friend of mine and we'll talk about this more when we talk about competition but um you know for some for some people that's a real benefit they want you know a, a place to live forever no matter what happens to you um but for us we were like we don't want to do that we don't want to give up all our equity we don't want to give up all our freedom our choices so we liked the business model of Rossmore. And then I would add to that on a different tone is that the fact that it's been here for such a long time, really trustworthy as a community and as a, um, a way of, of being. I think if we wouldn't get the kind of growth and stuff like that, I think if there was, if there was a lot of problems. Also, that brings up the Waterford. You can, you can move within the community into a more sheltered environment if you don't want to own your home anymore. And for a lot of people, that's a comfort that they're still in the community with all their friends, but they're not living alone anymore. And that was uh, two people I know that moved here. That was a big plus for them. Mm -hmm. Not that they wanted to move there or were going to move there, but that was there for them. Mm -hmm. Okay. Since I'm the old guy here, uh, it, it, as far as living here the longest, <laughs> we're not going to identify ages now. Uh, um, when I first moved in, the event center wasn't here. Creekside wasn't here. So, so one of the big pluses to look at over the time that I was here is that Rossmore's not sitting still like many other retirement committees do. You buy in. 10 years from there, you remember what it looked like then. It probably looks exactly the same. We seem to be evolving with the needs and, and, and uh, of, of the members and changing all the time. And we're kind of trying to look ahead for possible things that will be coming up that'll attract other people. But the fact is that it always feels fresh and new here. You know, you know what I'm trying to say? It's, so with being here this long and seeing all the transitions and everything has gone to gym, that wasn't there. It was a high school gymnasium, you know. Yeah, so, yeah. so it, it the things that are happening here and changing all the time and keeping up with everything. And I don't know how you want to put that into just a couple of your words. <laughs> Hands <Yeah>. used. <laughs> yeah, I know. Wait till I get started on the coffee. I'll just... Kevin, I was nervous about the insurance issues, so I watched a number of board, uh, GRI board meetings. I saw the town hall that you had. And I, I just had confidence that it was stable enough that, um, that they'll figure it out. And as a you're going out and talking to state and federal legislators, and the city is backing backing Rossmore, and other uh, areas are having similar issues. So. I think the size, the large size, and the number of people um, that are here. I think somebody mentioned about the variety of people, but. Um, you know, having worked with my mother on you know, various senior places where she lived, when you have a real small community, that can get kind of conflicting. Let's go just call it that. Um, and so it was appealing that there would be so many people, but also people that were uh, nice and, you know, willing to make new friends and stuff, which has been the friendliness of people and the helpfulness of people. 
since we've moved in, just neighbors coming out of the woodwork to as we've moved in and stuff. It's just been so they're just kind of the, the size and number and friendliness of people. And on the insurance thing that was brought up by Kevin, um, I, we might not be 100% insured here, but what we've done is taken a different look to how to do it with the staff that Jeff has. They've uh, uh, got a hold of uh, a cow buyer and they've shored up everything right in your backyard. They shored up everything around us to protect us against wildfire. And then, wait, that's kind of an extra insurance that a lot of people won't do. They just think the insurance policy will take care of everything. And so we're doing that, that and plus some internal things within Rossmore with Firewise to increase the security here. Mm -hmm. That if there was a wildfire, it's not going to spread like some of the other places because we are going to be protected here. So, okay. Anything else? I think that's a good list to start with. Thank you, everybody, for that. Hey, some uh, exciting news, I think, and the board approved it yesterday. So we have two more members that are going to join this task force. They will not be voting members. And Amy, you may have some connections, but the Haas School of Business has a what they call the Center for Social Sector Leadership. So MBA candidates, mm -hmm. so the current students, the cream of the crop, apply to be a part of these programs. And this one is called, uh, well, they used to call it bears on boards, but now it's called fellows on boards. <laughs> I like the bears on boards better, but, I do too. <laughs> uh, uh, but we will be assigned to um, uh, MBA students uh, for the duration of our task force. They will attend our meetings. Uh, they will participate. They won't be voting members. They're also going to be attending the board meetings uh, for GRF. Uh, again, not, not voting members all to give them an experience of how nonprofits, we're not a 501c3, but we are a nonprofit, how nonprofit boards and efforts work in governing. Uh, so it'll be a great experience for them. And I think we'll get some interesting perspective from them uh, for a different age group, if you will. Uh, mm -hmm. So I, th I think it's gonna be a good challenge for us as well to have them on board. So they won't be attending until they're going to view this video, by the way, uh, but they will be attending on October the 8th <clears throat> at our first meeting, our next meeting. So that will be fun. Hmm. So next, <laughs> Ann Peterson has a presentation that, that she has. Oh, yeah. We were going to do an election of the vice chair. That's why we had that first. <laughs> Who would like to be vice chair? Any volunteer? So Ted, I was going to say, what do you mean? <laughs> Ted nominates himself. Yeah. <laughs> Does everybody agree? It's yeah. unanimous. Yeah. Yay. Yay, Ted. Right. <laughs> thank you, Deborah. And thank you, Ted. Um, Only with experience, Ted. <laughs> um, so Anne did a presentation to the senior management staff a number of months ago also to the board uh, and to the public, it was open to the public, um, about some of our challenges. And, and so is this, I'll- this one, Ann? Is this the one yes. you sent out? Yeah, yeah. I got That's it. what you're getting today. We're, yeah. we're gonna go through it. <laughs> so we're gonna ask her to go through that presentation, just as some of the groundwork for our thinking as we move forward. So Ann? All right, so we're gonna start with the big question, kind of what got us here. Why is it hard to, to market Ross? We start with the branding issue. We have way too many identities. We're known as Rossmore, GRF, Golden Rain Foundation, Walnut Creek Mutuals. It's really kind of hard to pin down um, who Rossmore is based on our identity. We're also not the only Rossmore. There's one in Orange County. There's one in New Jersey. I found a 382 town in Kansas that's also a Rossmore. And we're not the only Golden Rain Foundation, but we are different from the other Golden Rain Foundations. In fact, we spent almost six months trying to wrestle back the Golden Rain Foundation name um, for, so that we could set up our own LinkedIn account. Everyone kept trying to lump us with Laguna Woods, and we kept trying to explain we're not them. <laughs> We talked earlier about, Amy brought up how there's the different price points with the housing. You do have a lot of different housing options in here. 
you have the cooperatives, you have walk-in units, you have duplexes, fourplexes, aplexes, multiplexes, single family homes, congregate living. On the one hand, that variety is good because it attracts a lot of different people. But on the other hand, it also means that you have a very diverse demographic. So just looking at a few of them, here's education. 53% of our residents have degrees, but what that also means is that 47% do not. When you look at the socioeconomic breakdown, we are largely in that $75,000 to $100,000 annual household income, but we have some folks in here who are under $10,000 a year and some who are up over a half a million. Their financial needs and expectations are very different. In some ways, Rossmore might have almost a too affordable label. So we are, our median home price is about $598,500. That's very good when you consider that Walnut Creek overall is $895,000. But what happens is a lot of residents end up with sticker shock when they find out about the coupon costs. Now everybody realizes there's a lot that you get with that coupon. But part of our job is really explaining that and helping them to understand that while Ross Moore is affordable, that coupon is not a fixed amount. It also varies based on where you live. So Mutual 61 with the single family homes, they have the lowest at $868, but they also pay for their own insurance if they're lucky enough to get insurance. Second Mutual is $1,142, but this includes your property tax. Fifth Mutual, pretty high at 1698 no property taxes, but you do get the insurance. So again, it's kind of all over the map. And it's you know, very important for those coming in to understand that where you live, that price point could change. Anytime I get, one of the things we do at Rossmore with the website is we maintain the general inquiries email address. Thing. So all those inquiries from prospective residents come to us. Anytime somebody says, what's your monthly fee? I share the actual coupon versus the CPI chart so that you can show them, relatively speaking, we stay at or below the CPI, but it does go up every single year. So they don't come in here on a fixed income and think that that's going to be their price point. Those are sort of your set. It happens every year, year after year, but we're also now facing some very big changes and we know that there'll be some changes that will continue to face us in the future. Obviously the insurance cost is the big one. In 2018, we were paying $2.3 million for coverage. Now, 2024, it's 22.3 million and that's going up again next year. And so what ends up happening, because our valuation is at $2.66 billion, and we only have $1.16 billion in coverage, Rossmore's unwarrantable. That means that there is right now a lender moratorium for the co-ops, which is making it very challenging to sell some of those co-ops. And there's still financial challenges for the condos as well. We also have a high dependency on our membership transfer fees when it comes to our capital funds. So in 2023, we started to see a decline in the MTFs and that has only gotten bigger here in 2024. Why that makes a difference is because you're seeing aging facilities and infrastructure. That's MOD after it's so I think that flood was two floods ago, but the point is a lot of buildings need those capital funds in order to, as Ted pointed out, keep those facilities built and maintained. There's other factors as well. So employee turnover and secession. This is one that we have seen in the last couple of years. As our employees retire or they move on to other jobs, new folks come in. You get some great fresh ideas, new perspectives from the outside. But Rossmore is different from a lot of other places, a lot of other retirement communities and other places where these folks may have worked. It takes time to learn how Rossmore works and to build that institutional knowledge back up. You also have to face all those natural risks, the earthquakes, wildfires, flooding, landslides. And this is one that doesn't get talked about probably enough. A lot of residents have longer lifespans but in this community, we have very limited resources for aging in place. 
But our biggest issue at the end of the day, we don't control the message. This is our current marketing plan. We have $5,000 in the budget for print and digital advertising. So to put that into perspective, you get about three ad campaigns a year out of that funds. Rossmore.com, it's a good website, but it is it has a dual personality. <laughs> in addition to being what we use to court prospective residents, it's also where all of our actual resident resource information lives. We are looking right now at ways to build up my Rossmore.com so that becomes the residence landing place and Rossmore.com can be more about prospective residents, but right now it has to serve two purposes. We did update the video about Rossmore in 2023. We had a couple of uh, realtor partners help us fund an update of that video. So we took it from an unwieldy 12 and a half minutes down to a much more manageable six minutes. But it's the only video we have. We don't have a video team. And again, $5,000 isn't going to buy you nice videos. And one thing that we're doing this year, so any new resident who comes in gets a white binder with a lot of great information about all the different departments and all the things you want to know in Rossmore. We decided that a bulky binder is really not something people are going to keep. So we are reformatting it in a magazine that will be delivered to all the homes on September the 25th. It will be updated once a year, so the residents will get a new copy every year, and it will replace the newcomer's binder. So this is what all of the new residents will get, and some of the prospective residents will get it as well. And before everybody asks, yes, it will also be online. It won't just be the fiscal print copy. But again, at the end of the day, we are relying really heavily right now on our marketing through the real estate agents. Now that's fine if you're talking about the folks who are experienced and are in Rossmore selling Rossmore all the time, but that's not always the case. Sometimes you get a realtor who's never sold in Rossmore and they promise the resident that we take care of everything. And boy, what a surprise it is when they get in here and realize we're not delivering them food or helping them with their meds. So being able to control that message and what goes out is important. As Kevin pointed out the other day, Remax has this great resource guide of what's in Rossmore, but it's outdated. There's some information in there that would need to be updated. If that's ours, we control the and have the ability to update it. But if it's somebody else's, then we now, one of the things I have to do is go talk with Mary about, hey, here's some new information. Can you get this updated? So it'd be much better if we did have more control over our own message. So all of you have a marketing background. We're not gonna spend a long time talking about what marketing is, but there's a couple of things I wanted to highlight. So first of all, it's more than a sales pitch. We are not just talking about attracting new residents. It's also about establishing a perception and maintaining an identity for our current residents. It's really at the end of the day about finding that way to set ourselves apart from everybody else. Dwight knows what's coming, so he's already smiling. My I'm gonna use watering. the <laughs> I'm gonna use the cookie analogy. So if I told everybody in here that I brought in real chocolate chip cookies, you immediately have a perception that's influenced by what I just told you. Real chocolate chip cookies. The second part of that perception is influenced by your assumptions and your past experience. So for example, if Grandma Jane always made homemade chocolate chip cookies. The word real chocolate chip cookies to you means homemade cookies. But perception is also influenced by what you see. So here's your real chocolate chip cookies. Ooh. It even says so, <laughs> real chocolate chip cookies. But I bet most of you weren't assuming that I brought chips ahoy, right? Most of you are expecting these. <laughs> now, your perception is really influenced by what you see. And when you eat the cookie, now your perception has been reshaped by actual experience. So just in case not everybody's into chocolate chip, I also have lemon cookies. The board didn't get these. You guys are so right? Nice. So now again, your, your perception has been influenced by what's your actual experience. And where that becomes important is that now your expectations are either met, they fall short, they're exceeded. But again, that's about that delivery with perception. That's really, really important. 
How much does presentation matter? So at the University of Columbia, they did a study with 2,000 students where they brought them in and they gave them three types of cookies. One were packaged in just clear cellophane. The second were packaged in the clear cellophane with a nice little bow. And the third, you couldn't see. They were dressed up in this really pretty fancy box. And they asked everybody to choose one cookie. Here's what it broke down to. 22% love the idea of gambling. What's the mystery? What's the cookie look like? I don't care if I see it or not. 58% wanted a little bit of dressing. They wanted to be able to see the cookie, but they also wanted it to be dressed up a bit. And 20% just wanted the plain cookie. The point in this is that transparency is important. 78% actually wanted to see it. So whatever we do with marketing and branding, we need to make sure that transparency is high up there. A word of caution, perceptions can be deceptive. So we have to be very careful when we're trying to build on those perceptions that we don't deceive. The photo that you see here was taken during COVID, during the pandemic. And when you look at it, you immediately think that these folks didn't follow the health guidelines. There's no social distancing there. But when you look at it from a different angle, they were. So we have to be very careful that whatever we are presenting, we do it in a way that is not misleading. Even when it's unintentional, that's what leads to distrust. And once we lose the trust of our clients, we'll never get it back. So now we're gonna talk a little bit about building a brand. And again, all of this is Cliff Notes version. Obviously there's a lot more to it than what I'm trying to present here. Just trying to give you guys the bullet points. So first it's about recognizing a brand. How many people recognize this? Does anyone know what that is? Amy? Is this? Mrs. It's Fields. Mrs. Fields. Mrs. Fields. That's a sorry. <laughs> it's red with the white with the white stripe. Mrs. Fields cookies. How about this one? Crumble. Crumble. Pink box. Little chef. Everybody knows it's crumble. Guess what? Everybody knows who we are too. So the Rossmore logo is a big part of our brand identity. We already have that visual element there. Everybody knows the blue, the green with the golden rain tree. That's us. But the point is, it's not just about looks. Brand identity is also your personality and your values. It's what you feel, what your customers feel when they interact with it. Finding ways to be remembered, creating those meaningful connections, building that story, building trust, building loyalty, that all gets built into brand identity. So let's look at how Mrs. Fields and Crumble Cookies did it. Mrs. Fields has a real fun slogan, good is never enough. And their motto is to treat the world with sweet gifts and a warm smile. Kind of makes you feel like Grandma Jane, right? They were the first to do the classic fresh warm cookies and they were a big staple in shopping malls. And Debbie Fields really at that time became the face of the working woman. It was sort of that idea that you could be the mom with the homemade cookies without having to be the mom at home actually baking them. Crumble cookies is their motto, every last crumb. And they have a big slogan on there, bring friends and family together over a box of the best cookies in the world. So if you're gonna brand yourself as the best, you really have to figure out what your model is to deliver that. And so the way they've done it is to be sort of innovative and fresh. They've looked at, um, they have open kitchens so you can see what they're doing. They have a rotating menu of individual selections. They're very tech driven, so you can order on an app. They're the coming of age cookies. If I asked my kids who are 13 and well, my oldest is 26, even the 26 year old, I say, do you want a Mrs. Fields cookie or a crumble cookie? We're going to crumble. <laughs> so let's take a quick look at what is really the purpose behind a brand identity. So it starts with that providing a face, your public visual image. It is your logo and it is what you are showing them visually what you're all about. It's also about building credibility. Your reputation, being dependable and trustworthy is extremely important and that's a key component of your brand identity. Offering a template, it's being able to be uniform for both marketing and communication. Supporting your mission, 
which is also your values. We're very fortunate in that GRF has a mission statement and has values already built in. So we do have a foundation from which we can build on. It's generating new customers. For us, that means being able to attract home buyers and maintaining past customers. I keep circling back to this, but that is equally important in everything we do. We have to always keep in mind our current residents and making sure that we find ways for them to connect with the values and ideas of what Rossmore is. And attracting quality talent. This is one that in Rossmore may get overlooked, but it shouldn't. It's extremely important that we have the right brand so that we can bring in the right employees. The employees are the ones who deliver the customer service. You wanna make sure you bring in folks who understand what it means to work with the residents in Rossmore. So now we're gonna talk about how you build that brand identity in 10 steps. First, you wanna assess your current, current brand identity. What works, what doesn't work? What are your strengths? What are your weaknesses? We actually talked today about some of the things that work and what some of our strengths are. It's knowing your values and your mission. If you haven't read what GRF's mission is or what our statement of values are, we should go back and take a look at that because again, that is a cornerstone of what we're going to do. It talks about what message we wanna convey as well as what our goals, what sort of goals are really important to this community. It's understanding your target audience. Who are they? What do they care about? How is your brand going to resonate with them? It isn't enough just to say that you're attracting 55 and older. Anyone can do that. So really, what is the target audience you're after? Research your competition. Some folks have already done this. What are their strengths and weaknesses? Study what their brand messaging is. Look at how they, what they use for visuals, how they communicate. There's lots of ideas that you can borrow from other people. This is a really important one, defining your brand's personality. This is probably also going to be the most difficult one to do. What's important to the community? What does the brand stand for? What are the non-negotiables? Is it low cost? Is it premier amenities? Is it great service? And how should people perceive your brand? And again, this goes back to the tough challenge because we have such a wide range of demographics, being able to really narrow these down is going to be a tough challenge for us. Create a unique look and feel, your visual identity. We have the logo, we have the color palette. Typography, we have a unique one with typography. One thing that we need to keep in mind is we're a senior citizen community. So what we select for fonts and font size needs to be ADA. We have to keep in mind that many of our residents are low vision. So that will actually knock out about 75% of the fonts that exist in the world. And then imagery. That's one reason why Dan spends a long time taking photos that go on our website to really show what Rossmore is all about. If the sun's just right, Dan runs out to take a picture because we want Rossmore to look really good because it is really good. And Dan did these pictures, if I'm not mistaken. Very That's nice. correct. <laughs> <laughs> and it's about developing a consistent brand voice and tone. That's how you build recognition and it makes sure you're creating the right emotional response. It's also about involving your audience and your brand. And this is where I think we really can succeed well. It's about asking for feedback from our residents and collaborating with them. Um, I was interesting, I met a resident who's also a realtor and she talked about how she had a listing and it was not moving. So she decided to just throw it out there on her Facebook page and it attracted a friend of a friend who lived in Lake Tahoe who ended up buying a unit here. And then she put all these pictures of her unit in Lake, uh, to, and shared it out with all her friends from Lake Tahoe. And the next thing you know, we have this little mini market of folks coming from Lake Tahoe. <laughs> Not because they're looking for your quote unquote summer home, they're looking for a winter home to get away from the snow. But just one Facebook post can make a world of difference. So we're looking at ways to be able to get our residents to engage in that way. It's also about hosting events, bring people in here so they can actually see it. Because once you see it, oftentimes you're sold. And uh, one of our board members, Maxine Topper had a great idea. What about an ambassador program? So why not have residents here 
connect with somebody who's thinking about moving in and they can show them why it is they love it. Because again, your best salespeople are the folks who already live here. Nine is about finally implementing that brand identity. Now's when you're gonna develop your messaging for your marketing plan. And you're going to talk about how you wanna build the awareness with your residents. Not just using the newspaper and the TV station, but what other ways can we really help our residents become aware of what our brand is? And I did tell you that it's 10 steps. That's because even once you implement the brand, we're not done. You have to evaluate and you have to adapt. We need to track the brand awareness, how well it's working, what customers feel, how they're engaging with it. And if something's not working, we need to change it. We've got to be able to evolve and make sure that we're moving forward with the identity. So I know it's a lot. I just threw a ton at you in like 20 minutes, but does every, anyone have any questions? Kevin. So this is down in the corner. My big idea for the day is we should be rebranded as Rossmore Wall Creek because Wall Creek is such a great city and it differentiates us from the other Wall uh, Rossmores. I've had to tell people in Hayward over and over, I did not move to Sacramento, to Long Creek. And his friend used to be on city council. He's asked me five times, how's Sacramento? That's a good point, Kevin. Yeah. yeah. So that, that was a lot of information. And, and it looks like Ann already has everything solved. I wish. <laughs> <laughs> but what she's asking us to do, or we're asking all of us to do, is to think about what do we need to do over the next six months in order to have something deliverable to the board that that achieves what we think we need to achieve. Some of that will be what Ann already talked about. Some of that may be different. We may come up with other ideas, like like the Remax book is something that we have to definitely take a look at. So just just some thoughts as you look at this or, or ideas. Kevin, that's a good one too. Rossmore Walnut Creek. Anything that you took away from this presentation or challenged by the presentation? On, on the, the last the last point, 10, is evaluate and adapt. I just saw where six months, this is not over. <laughs> you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So the document, whatever it is that we're going to have to do, has to be a living document that can be utilized all the time and probably one of the recommendations should be it's looked at every on a yearly basis, maybe by the board that's there, or maybe by a, you know some some way. But it needs to be looked at every year, and I think that we need to to take that ten bullet point and 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 expand on it. That that's part of what we need to do when we're all done. Is that this document has to be reviewed all the time? Yeah. Agree. To kind of build on what Ted said, I would consider this project to be a brand refresh as opposed to a brand a new branding exercise. And branding re refreshes take really, really, really a long time to take hold. So um, again, I'm come from a data market research last decade or whatever is so in market research. So I can probably bug that I've got a new answer for data. And have a whole bunch of data questions here. <laughs> but um, but one of the things is is true is that people have this expectation that you do it and then six months later, boom, everybody changes. <laughs> but the longer that you've had a, a, a brand in the market, you can almost like, if I've had my brand in the market here, this is how long it's going to take to change. Not that you won't see shifts in the early stages, but you know, particularly if you've got hundreds of real estate agents and you know people that's I mean my grandmother lived here in the 70s mm -hmm. so I have my stretch for you know what is a cookie goes back quite a quite a ways mm -hmm. she didn't she wasn't not a good cook though <laughs> <laughs> my mother fortunately yes but my grandmother no um so I wanted to just set that expectation that whatever we set in place for measurement that there isn't like Oh, a year, it's not working because it takes much, much longer for it to change. I like the refresh concept. Too. I do too. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Yes, I would just, just like sorry, just to continue on that one with one more small point. That means that the establishment of what is current within the markets, and we do need to narrow that down really, really quickly. It can't be everybody and their dog because 
you will, we will fail. So there has to be a prioritization, primary market, couple of secondary markets, and then we can have some tertiary markets. But otherwise, if you try to be something to everybody, you're gonna, we're gonna fail. Um, that there has to be a baseline that we have to take quickly. Uh, this is where we think things are now, so that we have something to, to this, is where, this is what the brand is now, this is where we want it to be so that we can measure whether or not it's making progress. Good points. I'm sorry, I interrupted uh, yeah. you. No, all right. Amy, and then no. I think I see Linda. I just would on. like to say, uh, I would not like to just throw away the idea of rebranding. Like today, our first meeting, <clears throat> because I have some thoughts about rebranding. The university I work for was rebranded, and it was a challenge, but it worked. And yes, Rossmore uh, has a lot of history, uh, but a lot of people don't know what that word means. And you listen to Sun City, Laguna Hills, kind of paints a picture. Rossmore does not paint a picture. So I would not, I would vote for at least us discussing the brand identity we have now. Well, and, and Amy, just to say, we're not making any decisions today. <laughs> this is an <laughs> orientation. I'm throwing out my idea. I don't, I don't think we're in disagreement, Amy. Okay. Because when I'm saying brand refresh, what it means is that we're not starting with a green field. There is a, a step amongst, and you pointed out a good thing, which is not everybody knows Rossmore, and a lot of the new buyers are maybe completely that new to them. I don't know um, what it means. But to, but it, but it does amongst a lot of, the, particularly the current residents, mm -hmm. there is already the Mrs. Fields view in their mind or the Crumble view in their mind or whatever. And so we have to move it forward to a new place. Sure, but I we have do to balance that. residents with new residents always every day that we're talking. Yeah, that's our balance. Absolutely. You have a you have a core deal too. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off, Linda. We, you have a core thing already. This idea of active adult community. So it, it feeds into what both of you are saying. You're not you're not going to rebrand yourself and suddenly stop being active adult. <laughs> That's not going to happen. But you are going to look at sort of how you refresh that so and really convey that so that more people understand it. Because not everyone does. When we first launched this off. Ted was talking about how he was going on and searching for retirement communities and not finding it. It's because when we drive SEO, we're actually driving it um, by search engine optimization. We're driving it for active adults. We're not looking at that more traditional concept of what retirement is. So we're playing that up higher than retirement, which I think is feeding into what both of you are saying. Yeah. Linda and Kevin. Sure. Um, I work with a lot of people coming in and people going out, and I think we do need to keep in mind that it's an experience here. It's not just housing or buildings. It's really the people that work here, and if they don't embody that vision and mission, and it's not delivering on the promise of the brand, and that is a huge, huge issue, and I get comments on it every day. So whatever this committee recommends, I think we have to take into consideration that the employees here need to understand it, buy into it, and deliver it, uh, because it's not just, it's really an experience with people. And that goes all the way down to the people that are like fixing a window or, or anything that's happening, I think that it's got to go all the way down. And I think the audience is really also employees. Very good point. Kevin? When we talk about branding, I'm surprised that a lot of the clubs have their own websites. So they're going, they're not part of the Rossmore websites, they have their own Rossmore Pickleball Club websites. So when we talk about branding, it'd be great if they were to adopt whatever. I'm, I'm, I'm looking at Anne. Did you want to say anything, Anne? So we, part of what we're trying to do is rebrand myrossmore.com and look at different ways to do that. And right now we, we're having some technical challenges because we're also doing the big NetSuite implementation 
to replace GenArc, our software system. That really has to happen first, but one of the things we had identified was a possible new portal where you could create microsites within that larger website, within the larger My Ross Moore universe, which would allow us to do that. We'd be able to create templates, clubs would be able to come in and have their own space. And a lot of that would already be pre-built. It's interesting because you look across the different club websites and some of them clearly have somebody on their staff, uh, mm -hmm. on their group who knows how to navigate the website world. And then there's those who don't. <laughs> and you look at it and it's almost like the, you know, dot com type early ages DOS type system website. And so, yes, it would be great, ideally, if we can move in that direction where you put everybody under the same umbrella. And again, you now have that consistency. So across the board, you can still maintain your creativity within that, but you have sort of that same look and feel and sophisticated level. And the, the, the clubs are vital to the whole activity genre at Rossmore. And I'm on the board of the Rossmore Activities Council, which is the umbrella for all the clubs. And we created a survey last year asking the clubs what they needed. And number one was help us build a website. And I don't care if it's a club with 10 people or 500 people, they all want to be on the web, be able, so this is gonna be fabulous because it's going to show our community. I just hope so, we can deliver it. <laughs> I want to make a point. That yeah. some, of, some of the goals that we might come up with, for example, enhancing myrossport.com might be 2026. You know, it may be longer term to get oh, where sure. we want to go, but identifying where we want to go is really important at this moment yeah. in time. So we don't want to. Well, so aren't that. we kind of building a roadmap for yes. ourselves yes. about what we want to do moving forward? Yes. It's not next year, it's the year after. After and year after. Any other comments? I'd love to hear just briefly, sorry, um, the ambassador thing. And, and Linda, oh, I think I it might it. have been you that brought it up in the interview process that, you know, or Kevin, no, you said because <laughs> you got introduced to Rossmore because you played in a golf tournament here. And otherwise, you can't get in, you can't see it, it's not available. <laughs> You're turned away at the gate unless you have a real estate agent. So having an ambassador program or an open house periodically, something that allows people to see the community is really important, I think. I vote for the ambassador Absolutely. program. Some, some stuff could be delivered immediately. I mean, there's no, if that does it, everybody goes, yeah, yeah, yeah. And the, you know, the board, the, the big board thinks it's okay, and there's no reason why some of this stuff. Well, my caution there is again, what's our message? So, if you're going to do this, we want to be sure those ambassadors are trained so that you don't have one telling them one thing and another telling a different person something else. So, that's one reason why we want this so that we have that consistent message that they all get to deliver. Yeah, and the ambassador would have to fill out a profile and the prospective resident would fill out a profile and hopefully they would match a little bit. I come from Brooklyn, I, I have two grandkids where you're meeting a friend automatically that you can connect with right away. But yes, gotta be trained. <laughs> so before we get into, and I brought up a favorite cause of mine there, but <laughs> before we get into too much of those details, yeah. We need to kind of scope out where we need to go over these next six months because as, you, as Anne identified in that presentation, there's just a lot of things. And Kathleen, I think you could add a lot more. But um, so when we look at what we want to deliver at the end of six months, uh, in my mind, I'm looking for a marketing plan. Uh, I don't know if that's the right term or not, but something that scopes out, as Amy just said, it could be things that happen now, it could happen 2025, 2026, but a marketing plan to go forward. That's gonna have a lot of elements to it. And and did you, is this something you wanted to discuss? Well, when we had talked initially before the meeting, you had mentioned that's sort of like a, a leap off point where everybody kind of has their ideas. You wanted a homework assignment, so that was the All homework right, assignment. That for homework. <laughs> <laughs> but in the agenda packet, uh, there's a, um, 
potential elements of a marketing plan. And I thought this is just something we want to think about. I don't you can provide some feedback today, but it's more about when we get together in October, let's try to scope out the, the elements that are essential or ones that are missing from this list of uh, marketing plans. So just to review them briefly, there's, uh, well, an executive summary. By the way, I asked ChatGPT to put this together for me. <laughs> I said, for that kind of thing, chat GPT. I said, give me the potential elements of a marketing plan for a homeowner's association. It was really amazing. Uh, a community assessment, and I think that's where you were going, Kathleen, with you know, detailed analysis of community, including demographics, needs, preferences, unique characteristics. Third, mission and vision. Dan talked about that. We have a mission and vision on the website. Are they set in stone? Do we need to take a fresh look at that? Yes, please. <laughs> yes, right. please. Okay, so that's something <laughs> we want to do. Yes. Uh, target audience. Uh, we can talk about that a little bit. Uh, marketing goals and objectives. Um, by the way, some people think a marketing plan is just, oh, well, how are we going to advertise? <laughs> There's a lot, a lot of elements to, to uh, developing a marketing plan. A uh, unique value proposition, that, that's a whole other discussion. Marketing strategies, broad approaches to achieve the goals, including community building, event marketing, and member communication strategies. Marketing tactics, specific actions and campaigns to implement, implement the strategies, such as newsletters, social media, myrosmore.com. Uh, community events partnerships. <laughs> Uh, communication plan, budget, and timeline, etc. So, not that we need a meeting for each of those, but I, and if there are other elements, I'd love to hear from especially the experts uh, here of um, other elements in a marketing plan that we should be considering. And then we'll kind of scope it out over the next six months so that by the end, we, we have a, a comprehensive something to recommend to the board. Maybe I missed it, but I didn't hear uh, assessing the competition. Very good point. I'm not sure that was listed there, but um, oh, actually unique value proposition, I think would include that, but yes, yeah. we absolutely need to do that. It was on that homework sheet too. I'm yes, talking about. Yes, 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 yeah. That's yeah. huge. I think you just didn't know like in the last two years, people, you know, demographics, where they came from, like I would never have thought of somebody living in Lake Tahoe during the winter and coming here in the summer. Or I've met people who live in Palm Springs, but come here in the summer. Mm -hmm. So kind of, I don't know, snowbirds, what do, what do you call it? Like, well, why people moved in, what made them come? Or yeah, I think Kevin's, yeah, that the, the average demographics is not very useful in this, in this situation. I agree. Um, I think we need to segregate a little bit in that forward look and to see whether or not things are changing. You know, and also we've come up through a, very, a, a weirdness, right? Coming out of the uh, COVID situation. And you can already see some of the trends that look like they were trends through COVID, not specifically here, but in some of the other marketing areas. And I think those are reversing back. Mm -hmm. So things that, that all of a sudden like, oh my God, it's a pivot point. And like, no, 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 we're going back to 2019. Mm -hmm. So I think that forward look, you know, who's who's moving in, who's moving out? Why are they moving in? Where do they come from? The specific demographics or social economic issues that you have, you know, are there particular areas? Because we, again, we can't peanut butter everything or it's going to turn out to be fish. Before to just to build on that for a second. So I think we also need some uh, great input from the real estate world and, and maybe that's a guest speaker, you know, from in one of our sessions so that we get some of that information. Because that's, that's where that information occurs. Like, why are people moving out? Or what's driving Or where they're them? coming from. Well, what from. Kathleen's saying is important. And I think one of, one of our goals is to attract new buyers. And I think it's important to look at the last six months in the different insurance environment we're in mm -hmm. and see who was able to overcome that obstacle mm -hmm. and who's been moving in the, over the past six months. That is a pivot point. I think Ted had a comment on the Amy. So we're talking, you know, we do have people who move in and move out here for various reasons. I think that that is something that we really should understand of the reason why they come to a spot. When I first moved in here, my move was <clears throat> was temporary. I wasn't planning on staying here. 
uh, building the house up in the mountains. And I had no desire to stay in Rossmore. When I got to Rossmore and living here, though, in, in the, and I had to be centrally located. So Walnut Creek was my buying area that I had to look at outside the gate. 21 years ago, I was looking at 850,000 in here, much different. Mm -hmm. So I, uh, uh, so we purchased here, built the house up in the mountains, and then, then fell in love with Rossmore and thought, we don't need this house up here. And this is where we want to live and stuff. And so that's, I think that there are people, they, they see the value here and they move in on a temporary basis while they're doing something else and they'll move on out. I think that's one of the things. The other thing is, I think the majority of the people that I talk to in, in my groups, in the different groups that I'm in, is they move here for the kids. Mm -hmm. oh, and, amen. But a lot of them, kids nowadays, I, I had a job, you know, you stay with the company you're with for a long time. They don't, it's the way my dad was with in the same company forever. So, but now it's, you do change around a lot, but there is a change happening. And that is once the people are here, and I mentioned about, I, I found a fun spot to live. They're telling the kids, I'll go on an airplane. We're done moving. We're not chasing you around the country anymore. Mm -hmm. And I found more and more people once they get in here. Still brings us back to the point of how do we get them in here? And if we're getting them in here because of the kids, I think we're keeping a lot more of them in here than we did before. Because when the kids go, they say, I don't want to go. So that's one of the challenges. But that thing there about how do we get, you know, that that piece? I got, you know, there's a couple of different ways they bring people in here. Amy, you I was just going to say, in my 14 years here, my observation is we have two basic groups. One is locals like me. I knew about this when, when I was eight and my grandparents lived here. A lot of people in the general Northern California, even Tahoe, know about Rossmore. And they think, this could be me at some point. The other, other big group is chasing their kids and their grandkids. And I agree with you that they have, they'll come here and then they'll say, okay, I'm done chasing you around because the kids are mobile, too mobile to do that and keep moving around. I also feel that we really have to look at the uh, forward age demographic. We have the boomer that we had a big bump I, I got in here before the boomers, you did too. And I felt a little bit young for this or this community. And I had a second home and I thought, oh, you know, I'll think about it and I'll choose, same as you. But um, we had that big boomer bump where the people either knew about it or chasing their kids. And we have to look at the forward demographics of who are those now boomer people can they afford it? Do they want it? And we have to, we have to focus on them because they're the age demographic that we want. Good point. Anybody else with some? You know, I think one of the things that you mentioned was people rent here and then decide to stay. Mm -hmm. I don't have any idea what the rental market here is like or how it's promoted, uh, I guess, to the realtors. But uh, I mean, how many, what's the percentage of, uh, condos here that are available for rent. Sure. Yeah. Well, Linda, what is, do, you, do you have that option? There's 23 I HOAs, have, so they, they, do you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, they, um, they're not tracking it on a percentage. Just look at the newspaper. Oh yeah, but that there's a ton that are handled through the real estate. I, I understand. Yeah, yeah, so, and they're privately, all privately owned. And as far as I can tell, trying to track that through um, any means is they're not, they're not really closely tracking. I was under the impression it was limited. It is. Well, <laughs> our we, have, we actually have a registration program. Yes, we do. There's, a, there's 132 lessees right now. That we know about. That we know about. about. Yes. <laughs> I need to give you a perspective here because we had a second home and we rented our house here when we would go six months in Palm Desert, six months here. We did that for 11 years. Okay. Now, I had one renter for 10 years, 
from Maryland. In the last couple of years, I put it in the paper. Okay. First year, I got two responses. That uh, four years ago. Three years ago, I got four responses. This year, I got 30. 30 from one ad. Mm -hmm. Just to give you, there's a perspective right there. Huge. 30. And I was getting two. Okay, so I'd also like to point out we do. We drive a lot more traffic to Rossmore News now yeah. online than we did mm -hmm. previous years. So just so that everyone understands, that doesn't mean suddenly everyone's in, more interested in Rossmore. It just means our pool for who can see the newspaper has expanded. But yeah, so but, just so that yeah, <laughs> I don't yeah, want, want this to be false. Well, I mean, <laughs> this false idea that people suddenly previously mm -hmm. three years ago were looking online. Right. They were online lookers because yep. they were from Maryland and Chicago. Where were you advertising the rental? Hmm? Where? Here. In, in the Rossmore News. News. In the Rossmore News. So I that mean, means we should uh, uh, to raise our, our digital rates. But <laughs> <laughs> As we were there's only like four or five every week. I mean, yeah. there's not a lot of personal people that are renting. I mean, a lot of realtors, but not a lot. But Amy, just remind me, one person at a time. Okay, yeah. Kathleen? So adding something to the um, list of things that you're collecting for the marketing plan that's kind of related to what we're talking about, there's a concept, which some of you may have heard of, called the buyer's journey, mm -hmm. which is how does that, that buyer, your buyer segment, what are the typical steps that yeah. they take to get here? And there's not just a single one, but we want to be able to identify maybe the three top ones or something, because then we can say, you know, here's about it this way, <clears throat> tests it this way, you know, learns about it this way, you know, here, here's the place where they tend to stop looking, you know, whatever is that journey. Um, and then that helps to identify when you get to the tactics, which, how to prioritize those tactics. By the way, something for us to think about too is we may want to do some focus groups or we may want to do some surveys. We may want to do some you know, outreach to residents. So just keep that in mind as well. Linda. I did have a question about tying up to other objectives at the higher level. Is there, we do need to identify those. Are there, for example, yeah, yeah, baby, boomer, baby boomers are healthy and they're living a long time and they're not turning over possibly as quickly as possible. And my concern would be that the, I know that JRF uses the membership fee for capital. And so do we need to take some of those higher level objectives into consideration when we're looking at this? What are you saying? Kill off people to generate more MTAs? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that might be one. Remember the Oh, yeah, we're on. <laughs> Sorry, that was a lot of We are living longer. Yeah, I mean, there's just a lot of, of those kinds of issues. And then there's a budget issue, which um, is a big concern. And um, at least it would be for me if I was doing the communications um, task. Um, do we have to pick? some kind of low hanging fruit type um, and have a, a plan that goes, you know, through who can we get to first that may possibly move here in one of those demographic trends. And we do have some, and one of them is safety issues in uh, the larger Bay Area that are driving people here. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, there's things like that that I think we could take advantage of if we wanted to be stealthy, you know, at for, the first year or two to try to to try to meet some objectives that I think might be. So let's talk budget for just a second. So to me, this is a lot of dreaming in, in, in this task force, and we need to dream first, and then we'll look at the budget. Let's not let's not be hamstrung by okay. dollars. I mean, there may be creative ways to get things done. Well, that or, yeah. Or there may be low low or hanging. Or definition of product that might actually contribute. In another way, yes. from a marketing standpoint. Yes. The revenue issue is, I think, important in selecting the, um, the target market. Mm -hmm. Because if you want, if you want to increase turnover, if turnover, and I don't know exactly how it works, but <laughs> if turnover <laughs> is a benefit, 
then you may want to attract a different audience than, than not, if you're it, not attracted. It's a huge issue. It is. I think it's a huge issue. And, and it's probably a like maybe an elephant in the room mm -hmm. that you, you may or may not, but we should know about that if that's there, an issue. There's data to support mm -hmm. the term. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. There's uh, some uh, uh, other things that we could look at too is there, and the most current one I have is from 2022, uh, a, a fact sheet for the whole thing. Many people moving in here, 50 some percent of the people moving in here were singles. Mm -hmm. and, what percentage? 52.7 uh, mm -hmm. in 2022. Uh, I don't, I'm not sure that we have the real, that's the most current one I have. And 42% were two people per manor. So that's another thing we have to think about too, is when we're thinking about who is our target, this, uh, this, is, this Ross Moore is 67 something percent women, 33% men. And if that's our, when we're thinking about how do we make this more attractive and, and the way it's gonna look, we have to think about who is our, when we're talking about who is the target market, it seems to me that we need to figure out how we're going to bring in more women. <laughs> Only because it looks like that, according to my stats here, that's who's buying the places. But it's like the coming in versus the who's here because the demographics are eventually going to produce more women as you get older. That's just the fact. It's because we die out faster. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, we want more to die fast. Bring in men. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Younger men. Well, I, I think the discussion is also missing that I think a huge potential market for Rossmore is the gay and lesbian community because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. it's growing here. 20 years ago, I watched there was a somebody a story online that talked about Rossmore. They said the largest club was VFW, which is a pretty organization, but very, very conservative. Mm -hmm. But when I heard there's a 1100 member Democratic club and 350 member gay and lesbian club, Okay, I'll give this a welcome. You forgot the cannabis club. Yeah, I heard, the, very I heard the cannabis club. <laughs> was very large. But I think, you know, in San Francisco, you could market. I was watching, I was at the gay parade this year, and I said, could Rossmore be in the gay parade next year? Yeah. Put a bus in with a bunch of the, have different signs, you know? I don't know. Just wait one way to get the word out. Have a walker race. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Jeff? Not, not to interrupt, but um, one of the things I'm really, really interested in and when I first brought this Ann and I started talking and then to the, the board is is that whole concept of defining what Rossmore is. Is it affordable? Is it active premier adult? Uh, and over our history, we've straddled that line and been both. We've been able to say we're, we're very affordable in the community, but we provide all of these amenities, program services, and everything else. The more things cost, the higher you know, prices go, and the, the coupon is getting more and more difficult to be both. So one of the things that I'm hoping to get out of this is help in defining what Rossmore is. So when we go and think about budgeting priorities, we think about program priorities, are we trying to be affordable? Or are we trying to be premier? Because it's getting more and more difficult to be both. Uh, I think with the insurance issue, we're gonna have to probably shoot more toward premier because people are gonna need to have more cash to buy the units or pay a higher price for mortgages. So Maxine, a, board, a fellow board member has a question and then we're going to uh, move to another subject. Maxine? Okay, um, I've been quiet the whole time. It's really hard. But um, one thing that I have not heard mentioned that I think is important to think about and consider is the diversity of culture. We have many, many, that's one of the things I truly love about Rossmore. Not like where my sister-in-law lives in Florida. Um, there's so many different cultures here. That's what brings beauty to the Rossmore I love. And I didn't hear anybody, We somebody did just talk about uh, the gay lesbian community, but we also have a wide range of other types of cultures and colors. 
And I love that about it. So I wanted to throw that in for consideration. Thanks, Maxine, we appreciate that. All right, so um, the assignment for next meeting, it's in the agenda packet, but just to talk about them, explore other communities similar to Rossmore. You know, go, go look for active you know, 55 plus or active adult communities and, and see what you find. I don't think you're going to find anything great, but <laughs> you're never going to get one of these in the mail. New community by Heather Farms. Oh, no. Oh, yeah. No. yeah. They've targeted you. Yeah. They, <laughs> look, at, look at that. Uh, it's pretty impressive. Yes. Yeah. No more chores right there in the middle. <laughs> Who's that, Mike? It's uh, Heather Farms uh, here. So, so, so yeah, gather gather information like that. The community they're building. So we can see what, what the competition looks like out there. Um, so, and any other good marketing ideas that you might, might stumble on. Be prepared to discuss the marketing plan elements so we so that we can start building towards that. Um, and, and you actually have, I think, a guest speaker lined up for next meeting. Do you want to just explain? Who so she's, uh, she's actually one of our advertisers and she, and she works very closely with some of the realtors kind of her side business is helping people downsize and, and declutter and that kind of thing. But what she does is a lot of senior seminars and she, her whole background is in marketing. So she was going to talk a little bit about um, the education part and really helping to, how do you, it talks a lot about what, what Kathleen was talking about, how you kind of segment this down so that it's not such a broad topic. You are able to take those in more in pieces so that we can hopefully do this work without feeling overwhelmed by what's facing us. So that's what she's going to key in on when she comes to join us. Deborah? And Amy met with me yesterday and she had mentioned, I just, since she stepped away, she really wanted to get clarity on your assignment. She wanted to find out if you're presenting by email or, you, or was she presenting this in a Word document? Is she just verbally articulating this assignment? So if you can clarify on that. Sure. And which brings up a good point. These are open meetings. So we can, Kevin, as you distributed to the committee, that's great. We can't really discuss outside this room. Uh, so just know that all discussions happen in here. So anything that you want to present, and Amy's back. Um, and Amy, we're talking about you. Amy, I brought <laughs> up the fact that you had inquired, we're on the assignment portion. Okay. Yeah. We're on the homework assignment okay. portion. Homework. And I brought Sorry. up the fact that you had, and you asked uh, your concern about how he would like it presented at the next yes. meeting. And so he was clarifying directions. Yeah. So I suggest you bring it to the meeting or like Kevin did, share it with, with everybody, uh, but don't engage in, in discussion outside of here. We'll discuss it here, uh, but feel, feel free to share. If you have questions for staff, I recommend that you send it to Ann, copy me just so I know what's going on. Um, and, and that's fine. It's just like you said, Kathleen, you're looking for some information. Um, and then next meeting, in addition to the speaker, we want to, at the end of the next meeting, have a good idea of mapping out the remaining meetings of what we want to accomplish. Uh, and that's kind of the agenda for the next meeting. I'm out of the country the next month, so feel free to send information. I may not get back to you, but um, we'll have an agenda out for us. Any questions? This is a good start. We've thrown a lot out today, but you guys, I can tell, are super engaged, and that is awesome because that's what we're looking for. And, and all the different perspectives that I thought we would find, we got them. So thank you for all of that, and please contribute healthily going forward. I also brought these as reference. If anybody want, has seen these, I have three of them, four of them actually. You've probably seen this one. This is super old, you may know or not. And then these two, you know, over the period of many years, people have published. I don't know if Rossmore has these or you, anybody's ever seen these, but I- I've never seen them. That's interesting. I'm happy yeah. to loan them out. They're uh, my friends, so I- They were done by individuals, though, weren't they? Yes, None of those yes. were done by- None of them. These are Rossmore. Yeah. These are just individuals yeah. saying, I want to do, something about Rossmore. But this is the last official thing we did. Yeah. 
And in it, it talks about the brand new fitness it's center, Tuesday. which is about 10 years old. So yeah. that's how long it's been since we've done a brochure. There's a lot of information in it, though, all those. Yeah. Anyway, I want to put it there, OK? I think I have those. OK, if anybody I think that, you know, everybody got the yeah. Remax yeah. ones, right? Everybody got that Remax? Uh, yes. Yes. Yeah. 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 I, I didn't. Remax booklet? You've got an email Kevin from Kevin. Kevin emailed it. Yeah. Okay. Yesterday. I'll look at it. It is 12 30. We are adjourned. Thank you very much. And we'll see you in October. Okay.